Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Benicia and this is the Willy Worker Knitting Podcast YouTube channel. But today is not a podcast episode, it's a special episode. And I haven't done any of these before, so I hope that you are going to like it. So I've had the idea for quite a while that I want to document from start to finish a whole knitting project. So having the idea, picking the colors, getting the yarn, casting on and encountering any challenges and problem solving them as they come. And then obviously the finished item and my final thoughts on the product. But as I was thinking about the idea more and more, I realized that it was going to be tricky to film and edit and structure and I don't really know what I'm doing. So I thought that I would start with something small to begin with, like an accessory. And the occasion has presented itself, so I decided to start filming today and I'll be documenting the progress on this knitted item and meet you back at the end. If you're new to the channel, then why don't you have a look at my usual podcast episodes where I talk about, for example, what I'm wearing here. This is my Lento sweater. And you can also follow me on Instagram or Ravelry at The Woolly Worker to see more behind the scenes and finished item photos. But I don't really know what I am doing in terms of this episode. So if you want to follow me along the way as I knit an item from start to finish, then keep on watching and if you enjoy that kind of content then let me know so I can make more. I have been accepted for another test knit and I need to buy some yarn for it and while I was on the website I realized that I could buy yarn that I had my eyes on for a while just to make the online order a bit more worth it and you know having the delivery costs pay for themselves. So what I'll try and do is record my screen at the same time and overlay it so that you can see what I'm doing. So this is why I'm going to be looking away. And I hope that the mouse sounds don't disturb you too much. So here I am on the website of Beautiful Knitters and I've got my items in the basket. Um, like I said, there's this yarn I've been wanting to try for a while and you might know it. It's Cardiff Cashmere because they do cashmere, which is something that I actually don't think I've felt before. I have a sweater that's made of lamb's wool that apparently feels like cashmere, but I don't even know because I haven't touched cashmere before. What I want to do is the Lolu shawl by Sari Nordland. I recently bought the pattern because she was having a spring sale and I knew that I was gonna want this in my wardrobe. I haven't made any shawl or scarves in a while and obviously they're really trendy and a lot of them are on Instagram right now. I think it would be nice for spring. I have this like nice v-neck coat that leaves my neck a little exposed if it's windy or just cold in general. So I think a, a small scarf would be perfect for that. I like this pattern because it seems a little more complicated than obviously just stockinette. It's a mix of cables and lace and there's only one size available. It's got a garter edge. So usually when I'm looking for a project idea, the first thing that I do, like almost straight away, is I go onto the yarn idea tab on Ravelry. And this gives me an idea of what other yarns people have used. And I usually use that for inspiration. So this project here is a DK weight and a lot of people have used mohair and merino held together, which this combination here is what the designer recommended. So it's understandable that it's one of the most used yarns. but. Some time ago, I had already scoured through these and realized that some people made it in very luxurious yarns that are DK. So for example, then I got to VIP. And here we go, Cardiff Cashmere Classic. So I click on that and it shows me people's projects. So someone made it here in blue as a test net and someone made it here in red. Well, it's kind of a magenta pinkish red. And that absolutely blew me away. I really like red. I really like the idea of having a red scarf. I like this red, but I think it's just a tad too pink for me. I also really like the blue one. Uh, but of course, I don't have to just do those two options. I can just use any color of Cardiff Cashmere. So here I am on the Cardiff Cashmere page. So anyway, I know that I want some reds and you can see them here. So there's that one is pink. That one I quite like, Sakura. 
but I think it's also a bit too pink here on the highlights. Uh, Magritte, which is really pretty. Scarlatta, which is also really, really pretty and deep. Gerbera, which is quite neutral red or a bit orangey. Hermes, which again, very trendy at the moment. Petit Knit recently released the poppy tea in that color. So uh, no wonder that it's going out of stock soon. I like it, but I think it's just a bit too orange. So what I would do here, if I'm wanting to compare some colors that look very similar, like Scarlatta and Magritte, is I would go on Ravelry. Well, there we go. So for example, here she actually used Margaret, which is that one. And like I said, I think it's too pink. So what I would normally do is I would go on the um, Ravelry tab for this. And here you can see people having it in stash. But what I do is I click on project and then this shows me people having used the yarn and I find that's really really helpful to see the yarn being used in different projects and different lightings. For example here it looks quite dark but still quite burgundy. The problem I had was I tried to look up the shade Scarlatta 714 but unfortunately, I could not find that on Ravelry. If we want to look at Hermes, 25 projects, that's Hermes. It is gorgeous, but not what I'm looking for. I think after some time reflecting, I just keep going back to that shade, Scarlatta. Part of it is a curiosity because I haven't actually seen it on Ravelry being used. And the other part is that I just don't have any other option that fully satisfies me. Hermes is too orange and Marguerite is too pink. So I know that people have used two balls to get the scarf. The balls are 15 pounds each, so 30 pounds for a cashmere scarf. I'm okay to spend that money. I still don't know that I'm at the point where I'm okay to spend, um, to buy like 11 balls of this for a garment. Add it to cart and I will be buying this yarn. Now I'll meet you again when I receive it. Guess what just arrived in the post? It's a parcel from Beautiful Knitters! Yay! So I'm going to be opening this and show you. Wow, I am so chuffed. This is the perfect shade of red. It is a little pinkish uh, in real life. It's showing up a bit more orange here on camera. Wow, this is my first time touching cashmere and the hype is warranted. This is extremely soft. Oh my god, and it's so light. It's only 25 grams per ball. Oh my, I can't wait to have a scarf made out of this. What do you think of the color? This is so precious, I can't wait. And yeah, as a little sneak peek, he, here is the yarn I ordered for a test knit. Hello, so today is Thursday morning and my yarn has just arrived, as you just saw. So I am so, so chuffed. This is exactly the color I wanted for a scarf. I think it'll, it'll just be the perfect amount of contrast and I was worried it was gonna to be too bright, but it's not at all. They're the same lot, color 714. I think it's Scarlatta, which like Scarlet, red. So what I usually like to do when I start a project and it may be overkill, but I like to really troll the internet, aka Ravelry, for people's notes on the project I'm about to do. So I thought I'd show you that as I do it. So once again, I'll share my screen on the side of your screen and I might edit out the bits where I'm clicking a lot. So what I do is I start the project on Ravelry and then I just do like add notes. And then what I do is I go on people's notes and maybe organize them like in the advanced filter by most favorite or most helpful. And then I just open as many tabs as I can. My computer hates me. And I just look for advice or thoughts or like 
practical numbers or dimensions. At this point, I don't know yet what is going to be like that important or not, but I just want to get an idea of if there's any issues before I encounter them. So let me just do that now. I don't open the ones that don't have any notes. Oh, someone here did an I-chord modification, which looks really pretty, but I won't go for that just now. Maybe the next Lolu shawl I do. Okay, so what I'm getting so far from a couple minutes of doing this is that a lot of people modified the pattern by repeating some charts to use up as much yarn as possible. I'm lucky in that I have two balls, so I, I know what, where my middle point will be. A few people have said that you might have to play around with needle size if you're not using the recommended yarn, which I'm not. So I'll start off with a certain needle size, I think maybe a four millimeter needle and then see if I like the fabric that that gives me. And if not, I might size up or down, which is fine. And I'm quite happy to see that some people were able to finish this scarf in like a few days to a week, which is what I'm gonna try and do. Today's Thursday. I would really like to finish it by the weekend so that I can post this vlog on Monday, but I don't know if that's unrealistic, especially because I want to block it and I don't know if this will dry overnight and I need to like edit the video. But I guess that's kind of my loose goal would be to finish this by Monday. So I hope that that happens. You can see here on Ravelry the needle sizes that people have used and as you can see the vast majority used a 4mm needle so that's what I'm gonna go for. It's nice to see quite a lot of red scarves. A lot of people kind of had, had that same idea and vision for it. So I think I'm done researching. I've looked at the first two pages of Ravelry and I think that's plenty. So yeah, I think I know the modifications I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a slipped edge, slip stitch edge to make the garter nicer. And I might increase the length by repeating some charts to use up as much yarn as possible. So I'll be having a read through of the pattern once the whole way through, like recommended. And then I will cast it on and check back in with you for a bit of an update to see how it's going. I'm planning to do the cables without a cable needle, if that's possible, to save some time. And yeah, I'm excited to start. Hello, it's me again. I've just finished chart one, so I thought that I would show you my progress and I guess give my thoughts on the pattern so far. So I'm super, super chuffed with how it's going. I'll show you the right side. This is the beginning of it. So, oh, it's kind of see-through, but yeah. So you've got lace and cables. I'll do a shot of me just showing it on the table. I guess it'll be easier. And this is the wrong side. Um, so yeah, it's like an, I guess, asymmetrical in the sense that it's only increasing on, on one end. So one side of it is straight and the other side is diagonal. And the yarn is such a delight to work with. It's incredibly soft. It is quite slippery, I guess, but the good news is that I was able to do the cables without a cable needle, which is definitely going to speed up the process, I believe. 
I'm quite happy with the fabric I'm getting on the 4mm. I could have maybe gone down to 3.75 because it's a mixture of knits and pearls and I have a feeling that, you know, that creates a more gapy fabric because I'm looser when I'm doing knits and pearls as opposed to just like all knits or all pearls. But I'm quite happy. I don't want to start over. Uh, I had a really quick false start at the beginning because what I wanted to do was a slip stitch edge and what I was doing was that the first stitch I was slipping it pearl wise with yarn in back but what I then decided to do was to slip the last stitch of the round pearl wise with the yarn in front and because I alternated like basically a few rounds after having started you could see the difference and I thought like I'm literally eight rows in I'm gonna frog and start again so I'll show a detail I guess of what my slip stitch garter edge looks like I'm quite happy with it I want to keep a good tension otherwise it's gonna pull but I think so far it's working when it blocks the lace will be more visible the cables I'm gonna try obviously not to flatten the cables too much the charge was easy to follow I was a bit rusty and I forgot at the start, you know, obviously when you're reading from the right side, you're reading the chart right to left and then on the wrong side it's uh, left to right. And obviously the knits on the right side are pearls on the wrong side. So just the usual uh, reading charts. I'm not reading the written instructions, I'm just going off the chart because that's what I prefer. I didn't print off the pattern, I'm just doing it from my screen at my table. And yeah, it's kind of intuitive in the sense that it makes sense but I still don't remember it and chart 2 is obviously going to be a bit different than chart 1 but the established pattern I understand it I know what's happening but I still don't feel confident improvising that might change as we go I'll see I really really like this I'm enjoying the pattern I'm enjoying the process I'm enjoying the yarn I'm enjoying like the imagining wearing it, I think it's going to be so, so, so lovely, especially with v-necks to, to cover the chest. Okay, yeah, so I'm seeing chart two now and it's much bigger. There's a big, like, square of, like, what is the repeatable pattern and what is, like, non-repeatable. I like the way that the pattern is written because it kind of, like, separates the scarf and then the edges. So it doesn't have to always write the edges because the edges are the same all the way through, but obviously you have to remember to work them. There's two stitch markers that you can place uh, before and after your edge. Well, I guess, yeah, two stitch markers to define your middle section. Yeah, I think this is definitely a, a winner, a pattern that I would do again. Obviously I haven't finished, but um, I'm just thinking of all the, the gifts I could do, especially with this yarn, like it would be a very special Christmas gift. The only issue will be trying to pick a, a color for the, the recipients. The pattern I'm following basically has kind of written instructions that go with the charts. And then it has the chart instructions spelled out in a different PDF. So on the one PDF, I kind of need to, uh, to keep going back and forth. So what I did was that I just opened two tabs on my computer. And on the one tab, I'm on the written instructions. And on the second tab, I'm on the charts just so that I can quickly go back and forth. But mostly the tab I have open is the chart. It's just like right now I'm going to flip through. I'm going to be switching from chart one to chart two. So I needed to reference back to the written instructions. So yeah, I think it's about lunchtime soon. So I'm going to maybe get started on chart two, take a note of what row I'm on and then get some lunch and I'll keep going. It's really enjoyable. So yeah, I'll check in with you again later. No problem so far, so that's good. Hi, so it's later in the day and I've been progressing on my scarf, Lulu shawl. I will show you, but again, I will probably put some videos and footage of it on a flat surface so you can see better, but I want to show you here. So this is what I've got now after finishing um, chart two. I love it so much. I think this is the perfect shade of red. Like, I am so, so, so happy with it. Like, it goes so well with that grey already. And, yeah, no mistakes so far. There were a couple of times where I noticed I had made a mistake in the row below. Because, basically, you need to have the right stitch count for it to work. So, 
and like nits needs to be on top of nits and vice versa. So if you make a mistake, it's quite easily noticeable. So I had to rip back a couple of times, but it was just ripping back like one row. Yeah, it's, just, it's really addictive because you always kind of want to reach the next section. So here it is like from up close. Like I said before, I'm enjoying the pattern so, so much. I love Starry Nordland's patterns. This pattern was like a bit pricey, if I'm completely honest, for a shawl. I thought, especially because it only has one size, but it has five entire charts. It's been written in like full instructions as well as charted. And it's full of detail, full of information, really cleverly designed. And like the increases are invisible. There's like an, an edging. So I think it is worth the money and I would recommend people to buy it, especially if it goes on sale again, like go for it. That would be an excellent scarf if you're like me and you're not a fan of like the very classic garter or stockinette scarves, <clears throat> the Sophie scarf. Then this is a, a great alternative that is a bit more fancy. And like I said, it only uses two balls of Cardiff cashmere. So it's of course a bigger investment than if you were to buy just one ball, but I'd rather spend 30 pounds and have a scarf I'm super happy with than 15 pounds and have a scarf I never wear because I don't like it that much. But speaking of this yarn, I may or may not have just bought some more Cardiff Cashmere Classic because working with this, I'm realizing I love it so much. It is worth the money and I want a sweater like this. I don't know that I'm at the point where I'm okay to spend, um, to buy like 11 balls of this for a garment and I had a really good deal on some balls of Cardiff Cashmere. There was an offer where you could get a box of 10 for a cheaper price and then you could also get a 10% discount on that. So in the end it was approximately 11.50 a ball instead of 15 pounds a ball, which I think is like a, a, a really good deal. So I thought now's the time and I purchased some balls to make myself an Elizabeth blouse by Petite Knit. Uh, so I don't know why I'll do that, but I'm really glad that I'm going to be knitting with more Cardiff Cashmere, especially because I feel like I'm flying through this project and I don't want it to end because I'm enjoying knitting with this yarn so, so much. So I'm really glad that I'll be using that yarn again. In terms of the pattern like difficulty, I feel like I've now reached a point where I'm a bit at a conundrum because when you finish chart two, you're supposed to repeat one more part of chart two and then basically repeat parts until you get the, the length that you desire. But lots of people on Ravelry have increased or repeated different charts. Like for example, some people have repeated chart three or repeated chart four or repeated chart two. And the pattern is intuitive, but not that much that I could just improvise how to increase it or how to mirror it. I feel like it's gonna be a headache, but I think this problem might solve itself because I might run out of yarn when I finish doing this repeat of part two. So I don't know. I'll check back in when I'm at mid when I'm at the midpoint of the shawl, and then I have to start decreasing. I really want to use as much yarn as possible, like I said, but it just seem a bit tricky to find, like, how to increase in pattern and use as much yarn as possible. Apart from that, it's been smooth sailing. Like I said, I've just been looking at the chart because I can't do it without, but a really nice experience. It's the next day and I've basically reached the halfway point. So I worked on it a bit more yesterday and then this morning uh, you'll have seen some shots of me working away and still very enjoyable. I think I finally cracked the code of what's happening in terms of like making it longer. Basically chart two and four are going to be mirrored. Chart three is like the midway point. And the problem did solve itself for me because I don't think I have enough yarn to make the shawl any longer. So this is what I have left of my first ball. 
and I weighted it and it's like three grams and this is like a full ball. So it's a bit annoying. I wish I had used more, but I don't think that this is enough to get me a whole new chart repeat of chart two before I move on to chart three. Apparently this is three grams, which means I would have six grams left overall out of 50, which I think is fine. It's not too bad. I have no idea what I would do with those leftovers. Maybe just a little swatch so that I can keep that cashmere. But I'll show you again uh, where I'm at and then I'll show you a shot on the side so that you can see better. So this is what I have and this is the widest it's going to be and then I'm going to be working decreases from now on. Oh. Yeah, so yeah, I still really, really love it. I thought I made a mistake at one point. I think I may have yarned over where I shouldn't have. And I was a bit sad, but then I worked a few rounds to see if it would be noticeable or if it would just be like a loose stitch. And it's actually fine and I can't really tell where it is or where it was. So I'm pretty happy with it. And this whole time that I'm knitting this, I, I just keep on thinking that I'm going to be making more of this pattern. I'm so, so, so happy I purchased it. I'm so happy I'm using the Cardiff Cashmere. I would, of course, make it again either in cashmere for a, a, a dear family member or I would use my like mohair scraps if I had one full ball of mohair left of a project, which I don't think I do right now. I'm usually quite good at not having full balls of things left, just like half a ball. I'm gonna be careful when I block this because I don't want the cables to flatten. I wanna keep the 3D effect, but I do want the lace to open up a little bit and I'll measure it obviously to see how I am compared to her measurements because I'm not going to be increasing anymore. I think I should be on par with her measurements. But I think I understand how I would make it bigger, which is really good to know for the future. The other thing that I forgot to mention is that I would recommend at the very start that you put a stitch marker to know what the right side is and what the wrong side is because at the very beginning it's not that obvious, but here obviously this is where the cables are, that's the right side and the wrong side looks like this. Just kind of like ribbing basically is what cables look like on the wrong side but yeah i think i'll just do chart three start the decreases i think that was the hardest part was just figuring out where to stop but there shouldn't really be any more thinking points from now on so i'll catch you later at some point i'm definitely on track to finish this by the weekend so hopefully this will this video will come out on monday as planned and it'll be all blocked by then so i'm looking forward to it Hello, back for another update. I have just finished chart three, so again I'll show you on the screen and also here in person. I've also weaved in the ends, I joined my second ball. In the end I was able to do 10 more rounds with my first ball and I definitely needed to do 36 if I were to do another repeat, so I definitely wouldn't have had enough yarn to do one more repeat of chart two and one more repeat of chart four. So I'm glad I went with my uh, yarn estimation and decided to just go ahead as, as the pattern says. The other interesting thing is that um, I kind of measured it at its widest point because I've reached the triangle tip and I'm nowhere near the measurements that Sari has. I think she has 13 inches and I'm at like nine or something. And like I said, I don't want to stretch it out to the max when I block it. I really, really like the 3D effect and I don't mind if you can't see the lace as much as long as you can see the cables being all plump. So here's the shawl. So um, that's the point. And as you can see I'm decreasing. It's getting funner obviously because the rows are getting shorter. Um, to weave in the ends I did like a duplicate stitch and what I'm going on the wrong side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to block it and then cut the tip just in case it moves a lot when it's being blocked. But yeah, I was thinking, I was looking at my stash, looking at like other things I could do this in because I'm obsessed with this pattern and I'm having so much fun. And there's a certain mohair I have like 75% of, so maybe I could try it with that. It's a like navy Issacher mohair. And then the other thing I have is like one and a half ball of like white putty mohair. So I could make a larger size shawl, which I would like to try what it is like to make this bigger and like increase it. So I might see if I have a fingering weight to go with that and then keep that as a, 
like reserved a stash for that. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to Ichi, who is the maker behind Tangerine Knits. Uh, I really like her podcast. She also made a, a bright red Lolu shawl and she made hers for the Chinese New Year earlier this year. And she didn't have enough yarn and she knew that from the start. So what she did was that she didn't make a, a triangle, she made a trapezoid. So there was a part of hers that is like completely straight down the middle. And that seems like it was a lot of effort for her to figure out how to do that. So congrats to her for trying to use up like her yarn. And her finished product is gorgeous. I'm gonna power on with this, go to chart four and see you later. Hello, it's later in the day, hence the lighting. And I've just finished part four. So what I'll do is I'll take photos and stuff in the morning when we have natural light because it's dark outside. Uh, I'll just show it on camera, I guess, quickly because I'm really excited. So here's the shawl. So like you can see, I just have the little point to do. We've got the midway point here. Um, so yeah, it went really fast as expected when you're only doing like decreases as opposed to increases, it flies by. Something I wanted to mention was that as per my notes in Ravelry, I had found someone explaining how they did the garter like slip stitch edge, which I really, really like the detail of. And they did it a different way whether it was on the increases or on the decreases. And I'm really glad that they explained that and, and put it in writing because I wouldn't have been able to figure that out myself. And I did it their way and it really is indivisible and flawless and symmetrical, which is always what I'm looking for. So super thankful for that Raveler. And I've put the instructions on my Ravelry page as well. So if you like that garter slip stitch edge, you can do it. I am curious to see what the shawl would have been like without that slipped edge. So maybe next time I do it, I won't, just out of curiosity, but I'm really happy I did it for this red one. The other thing I wanted to mention, yeah, is whether this pattern is good for beginners. Um, I think it would be okay for you to do if you've not done cables before and if you haven't done lace either, because the lace pattern is really simple. The cable pattern is really simple and it could also provide you with an opportunity to practice cabling without a cable needle, especially depending on what yarn you use. Maybe if you're using a fingering and a mohair, that might not be ideal just because you're working with twice the amount of strands. But if you're like me and you're just working with one strand of DK, then it would be perfect to try cabling without a cable needle. And yeah, if you're an adventurous beginner, I guess is what they call it, then yeah, go for it. I would say though, you need to be reading charts. Like I appreciate the work that went into writing the written instructions, but I think it's almost too confusing to have that much text and the charts are much easier. And this is something that came up a lot in Ravelry where people were saying that they had started with the written instructions, but charts were just so much simpler, especially when you're having to follow a repeat, like of a, the part of a chart that repeats like twice for example, or three times, it's just so much easier to see it on the chart because it's outlined like in red, which part you're repeating. So yeah, go for it. And it's a scarf. It's a small, easy project. If it doesn't work out, it's not the end of the world. It's not like a cabled sweater where like it's a lot to invest in time and money. I'm curious to know if this video is making you want to try out this pattern, the Lolu shawl. I'd love for you to tell me in the comments if you're going to make this shawl or if you have already made made it and if you love it as much as I like mine so far and if you're going to make it let me know what color you're going to make yours in I really like the neutral colors that the designer and lots of other people went with I was thinking of it like a royal blue would be lovely for this so either a royal blue or a neutral yeah and also I'd like to know if you guys have other cashmere recommendations because as you can probably tell from this video, I am becoming obsessed with cashmere now, which is very dangerous. But let me know if you know of any other brands that do 100% cashmere or if not 100% cashmere, like a good percent, not like, for example, Rowan. I know that they have like a yarn that has 10% cashmere. Um, for the price of something that is much more cashmere heavy, but let's not get into that. So let me know of any cashmere recommendations because I'd love to try out some other yarns because if not, then Cardiff Cashmere is going to get all my money. <laughs> but yeah. Um, oh yeah, basically what I wanted to do was maybe <laughs> keep going tonight and finish the scarf because it really doesn't have many rows left in. 
but I think I need to take a break. And like I said, I'm enjoying this project so much that I want to stretch it out a little bit more. So I'll keep working on it tomorrow morning, take some photos, videos, and come back with my thoughts. What I'll also do is I will film me blocking it and also hopefully maybe film a little bit of behind the scenes of me uh, photo shooting it with my boyfriend. Hopefully we get some nice weather over the weekend. I think it's meant to rain tomorrow, but maybe on Sunday there'll be a bit of a dry moment where we can go outside and showcase this baby in the light it deserves. So I'll see you at the end. Hello everyone, so it's Sunday, exactly a week later since buying the yarn. It's been a journey, so I am just going to film this last bit to catch up with you, show you the final product, share my final thoughts and then we'll say goodbye. It's been a, a fun week documenting the progress and the process. I want to do it again, but it's definitely a lot of work. <laughs> it's more work than it looks like or than what I thought, but it, it was good to do it. So here's the finished shawl. It's on a hanger here, for example, to show it. Um, yeah, I, I love it. I'm really, really happy with it. I'm gonna share some photos of it on the side as well because we're losing the light here. Yeah, yesterday on Saturday, I finished it in the morning. I was making a few mistakes, stupidly, towards the end, but that was the part where I was making the rows shorter and shorter. So if I made a mistake, I just unraveled it as opposed to trying and like 
ladder down to fix it, it would just be faster to to unravel and put it back on the needles. That happened a couple of times and it slowed me down, but then I was just racing through it because it was just like super easy to finish. Then I realized that one end was bigger than the other. I can't remember if it was the increases or the decreases, but it wasn't symmetrical when it was folded. Uh, but as you can see, that blocked out pretty much, so um, that's fine. I was a little disappointed and worried. You know, I don't know if you also have that, but like when you're so happy about a project, you get all the dopamine, then you get to a point where you're not feeling super happy about it anymore, and then you feel like, then you go back to feeling super happy. I don't know if that's relatable, but I was feeling a bit down about it yesterday, and then I blocked it, you will have seen some footage of me, I actually pinned it out and measured it and that's also when I was realizing that it was quite a large difference in sizes. And I went a little crazy with the pins and the blocking, I think I may have stretched it out too much, but I think the cables still have some good definition, so I'm not, I'm not mad. And I know that if I put it back in the water it'll be fine. I'm super happy with the drape I'm getting, I'm happy I went with a 4mm, that's what I would do again if I were to make this again. I think something tighter would make the shawl smaller and then also denser, but I'm happy with the, the drape and uh, it obviously feels as amazing as it did this whole week. I'm super happy to have it. The cashmere does catch a lot of little fluffs and hairs and dust, so I'm gonna be keeping this maybe somewhere safe, like in a, in a drawer or something, um, and I don't want to shove it at the bottom of my bag and then it's catching up like everything that's at the bottom of my bag. Uh, sorry, I'm a bit brain dead. It's the end of the day. We just went outside for a photo shoot, so I'll also be inserting behind the scenes footage of that. It was so much fun. It was really a weird experience trying to record recording, but it was good fun. Uh, it was rainy most of the day, but then it calmed down enough for us to snap some photos of it outside. It's a very moody Scottish landscape background, um, not at all the kind of sunny weather that we're hoping for later in spring, but I think it goes well with the red. So yeah, with the blocking, it became longer, which is good, and also wider. I think I gained a good few inches um, at the widest point. But I'll put the measurements on Ravelry. This is also something I'm not going to put a screen recording, but something that I do after each project is obviously going on Ravelry and updating the project to finished and putting some photos and putting thoughts and, and notes and just always being very thorough with, with that and also weighing the yarn and putting how much yarn I have. I have seven grams left, which to be honest, I'm a bit disappointed about and that contributed to me feeling a bit down yesterday because I really wanted to use as much as possible and seven grams is like a bit much to have left. I don't know what to do with that. I think the smartest thing to do is going to be that I'm going to use those leftovers to swatch next time that I'm using Cardiff Cashmere so that I don't crack into the balls of the new Cardiff Cashmere. So the color you will have seen that's for the Elizabeth blouse. Uh, yeah, so I probably will just swatch in the red and then cast on the project with the blue. And then if I have leftovers of the blue, I'll use those to swatch, etc, etc. Or use enough of the leftover blue to do a scarf. I think that's about it. I was pretty good at giving my thoughts about the pattern and the yarn all throughout the week, so there's not really a huge revelation to do here at the end, it's just gonna be like the photos. Um, let me know what you thought of this format. I try and take some lessons from the last vlog. I tried to put uh, less music than I did and I, I put it less loud and I didn't speak over music because I know that's something that you guys have said was not so great in the last vlog. So thank you for leaving those comments and let me know. So let me know if there's anything I, I could change about this. If I were to make another vlog about a project specifically, would you want it to be shorter and less detailed? I feel like, I don't know how this video turned out to be like 45 minutes long for a shawl, but let me know if, if you liked seeing my thought process, especially at the start with the yarn picking, pattern picking, notes, etc. Do you also prefer my thoughts to be given as we go or at the end as a conclusion? And also let me know if there's ever a project that I mention in the podcast, if you say that you'd rather have, like, if you wanted a full video on that, then I'd be happy to do that. Um, I don't really know how to do vlogs about projects if I'm going to be talking about them on the podcast. I don't want to be saying the same thing twice, but I'll just do some more research on how to make those videos and plan them out a bit better. So yeah, I'll just be putting up some videos at the end, I guess, of the photo shoot and 
I'll see you in the next podcast episode. Like I said, if you enjoyed this video, then please consider liking it, commenting to let me know, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you like this content and you want to see more, or if you want to look at my podcast episodes, if that's what you prefer watching. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy knitting. Bye! Okay, sure.